so on the model builder toolbar first click the auto layout so this is auto layout and i click on it and then full extend bot uh, button so this organizes the model elements into a consistent pattern although it has no effect on running the model it makes it easier to follow the workflow in your model as a general tool after every few modification or additions to a model it is a good idea to use it's a good idea to use the auto layout and full extend buttons to re, uh, reorganize the model elements so we're going to run the model we can um the model is ready to run and we could just click this run or i can just right click on it click run or um da -da -da, another one is model and then click run so there are three ways so the first one we can click the run in the model to bar to run the entire model or we can just right click on it uh, and then we can just go to the model okay and since there is only one tool in the current model there is no difference between running the entire model model or only a single tool but this option becomes more relevant when your model becomes more complex complex so now the model builder bar we click the run button um, to run the entire model a model process dialog box appears that shows the progress and time elapsed in running the tools in the model the messages are similar to those in the results window when geoprocessing tools are running right here okay um, and since you, we are running the model from model builder the execution of the model is not recorded in the geoprocessing result window but on the model progress dialog box it's right here if you were save your model and close it you will run it as a tool and then the tool execution will be recorded in the result window and we're going to close the flooding analysis dialog box when the model is run completed the model elements uh, other than the input data have a job sh um, shallow this is the sh shadow drop shadow to indicate that the tool has been run and the output data sets have been created in this case is a shape file although the output shape file flood clip uh, shape file was created it has not been added to the arc map table of contents by default arc um, the model builder assumes the model outputs represent intermediate data so we're going to right click on the uh, flood shape file elements in the model and then click add to display then the right um, right click the layer and we're going to do is zoom to layer and then it's right here and we can now confirm that the flood clip layer has been added to the arc map table of the contents and that is represented the clip version of the flood zone layer and on the model builder toolbar we're going to click save button it's right here and then on the menu bar we're going to go to close or you can just close by checking that thing and on the our exercise two two box it's right here and we're going to click double click the flood analysis model and this brings up the the flood analysis tool dialog box with the rather discouraging message this tool has no parameters so what happened where is the model so model our tool so by creating a model you automatically create a tool and tool tools have a tool dialog boxes to specify parameters however in the model builder interface you only created the model elements without indicating which elements should become parameters in other words the model is not yet fully ready to be used as a tool in which the user could specify the two parameters so instead of running the model as a tool we are going to go back into the model itself so create um and we're going to cancel click cancel and close it out and then in the exercises two box we're going to right click on the flooding analysis tool and click add it and this brings us back to the model builder interface notice that the clip tool and the output feature class still have a job shadow 
the model has already been run and it remembers its processing state. So next, we can add another step to the model. We will make some notice that the polygons in the flood zones layer cover the entire study area. This is how traditional flood maps are organized. Polygons cover the entire study area, but are coded as being inside or outside particular flood zone categories. We're going to add a tool to select just the polygon of intersect. So, and then we go into the arc to box and drag the, um, drag the uh, select tool in our model. So in the model, we're going to double click the select tool. And for input feature, we're going to select um, clip tool. Flat zone, flat clip, flat zone clip, flat zone clip, flat zone clip. All right, and then da -da -da, yeah, it automatically save it there for us. And then we're going to create, we're going to create the expression. Then this is the SQL, 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 SQL. Expression, you say it's, um, you see it's optional. And we click this SQL button and on the query builder, dialog box we're going to create expression as fha and equals and then look into n and click ok so the sql um so now on the query builder dialog uh, we created the following expression, uh, SFHA. So SFHA stands for Special Flood Hazard Hazard Area. Special Flood Hazard Area, it's in that area. Special Flood Hazard Area. And then we're going to click OK here and to close the query builder dialog box and select the toolbox and should now look like here. Uh, and we're going to click okay and let it run and and then select tool all right okay and now this one is this and i'm going to clip it should be okay click apply click okay there so i don't need this here delete okay so this fitting here, so I have to make some changes. And on the model builder to bar, we're going to click auto layout and then fitting to model, uh, fitting to paper. And the model is um, ready to run and we're going to click the shape file, right click on the shape file element and turn it off, um, add to display. All right. And then it's intermediate data. So, and then we right click on the flat shape file element and turn on add to display. There. Right click on this and turn off. And right click and turn on. Flatting shape file, flat zone, add to display. There. Clip turned off and right click on. I already turned this on. All right, and then on the model builder toolbar, we're going to run the um, button and to run the whole model because clip tool was run previously. Only the select tool needs to be run for the mod model to be complete. So I can just clip run and you see clip is not running, but it's okay. And then when the model run is complete, close the model progress dialog box I did, and we're going to save and close the model. All right. And maybe I have to bring, add it and add to display. Yes, there, that's the, 
I don't need to show everything. I don't need rows, base, and flat zone. All right, that's the final. Um, that's the final data frame. All right, we're going to use scripting for geo, geo processing. Scripting represents another way to carry out geo processing operations are in ArcGIS. A basic Python script is similar to a model, except that it uses code instead of the visual programming language of Model Builder. Python is the preferred scripting language for working with ArcGIS, and Python code can be run directly in the Python window. So on the ArcMap standard toolbar, we're going to go, uh, you can just click here, bring the Python right here, or we go there, geo processing and Python, it's the same thing. And this opens the Python window, the prompt. So the three brackets and uh, bracket angles, uh, brackets, angle brackets, the prompt indicates that the Python window is ready to accept code. To be able to run geoprocessing tools from Python, we go in, uh, first we're going to import the ArcPy side package, which you will do next. So um, importing the ArcPy side package makes all the tools in the geoprocessing frame framework in ArcGIS available for Python scripting. And we're going to follow the prompt and then type the following, import ArcPy. And within ArcPy window, um, within the Python window, ArcPy is automatically re referenced. So the import ArcPy statement is in fact not necessary to use the geoprocessing tools for within that window. However, code in the Python window can be converted to a script file .py and, and standalone scripts do need the import ArcPy statement. So do not type the greater than, uh, the greater than the three angle brackets, greater than symbols. They are shown here to indicate that Python code should be typed following the prompt. When the Python script is being written, which is discussed uh, later in our videos, the prompt is no longer used in many programming environments. The prompt is preferred to as a command prompt, so we may see either term used in the documentation. So notice that the Python window provides prompts to assist in writing proper syntax. For example, when you start typing the letter I, a list is provided uh, of the code elements that start with this letter. So you can select the option you want by using the arrow key to point to it and then press tab key. So I'm going to try. So um, he enter and I and then press tab key. Oh, um, if I want if import and then arc pi. So I can just select on it and then um, enter. All right, after the first line called import ArcPy, we're going to click enter and press enter brings up a new prompt at the next line. So it's right here. And then you can do uh, imp uh, imp import again. And remember that Python is an interpreted language, which means that in the Python window, a single line of code is run as soon as you enter, enter. Now we are ready to run a geoprocessing tool. So next, um, next one we're going to do, uh, on the next line of code, we're going to enter, um, is arc pi. Oopsies. Arc pi doc clip underscore analysis and this code calls the clip tool python 